Welcome to our podcast, where we delve into the fascinating topic of China's emergence as a superpower. I'm Professor Mei Lin, and today we will be exploring China's rapid economic growth, technological advancements, and expanding global influence. Joining me are our esteemed guests, Dr. Wei Zhang and Lily Chen, who will provide valuable insights into China's economic development and foreign policy strategies. Let's begin our discussion on this remarkable transformation of China and its implications on the global stage. Absolutely, Professor Lin. When we talk about China's economic growth, it's crucial to recognize the monumental shift that has occurred over the past four decades. From a predominantly agricultural society, China has transformed into a global hub for manufacturing and technology. Dr. Zhang, could you shed some light on the key policies or factors that have fueled this growth? Certainly, Lily. One of the pivotal factors has been China's open door policy, initiated in the late 1970s, which encouraged foreign investment and the development of a market-oriented economy. This coupled with significant investment in infrastructure and education, has propelled China's GDP growth rate to an average of about 9.5% per annum from 1978 to 2018. This has not only lifted millions out of poverty, but also positioned China as a critical player in the global economy. Fascinating, Dr. Zhang. And let's not forget the role of China's accession to the World Trade Organization WTO in 2001 which further integrated China into the global trading system. This move significantly boosted China's exports and foreign investment inflows. But with economic power comes greater responsibility and inevitably geopolitical tensions. Lily, how has China's foreign policy evolved in response to its growing economic power? Great point, Professor Lin. China's foreign policy has indeed become more assertive as its economic stature has grown. The Belt and Road Initiative, BRI, for example, is a testament to how China is leveraging economic investments to expand its influence across Asia, Africa, and Europe. However, this has also led to concerns among some nations about debt diplomacy and the strategic intentions behind these investments. Yes, and those concerns highlight the complex interplay between economic growth and geopolitical strategy. It's also worth noting that technological innovation has been a significant focus for China. The country is rapidly becoming a global leader in areas like 5G, artificial intelligence, and green energy technologies. This push towards high-tech industries is part of China's strategy to move up the value chain and reduce its dependence on manufacturing low-cost goods. Indeed, the emphasis on technology also reflects China's ambition to play a leading role in shaping the future global order. However, this technological race, particularly in 5G and AI, has sparked a new dimension of rivalry, especially with the United States. The question of how this rivalry will unfold and its implications for global stability are something we'll need to watch closely. Absolutely, Professor Lin. The dynamics of this rivalry and China's role in the global arena will undoubtedly be one of the defining features of international relations in the 21st century. It's a topic that requires ongoing discussion and analysis as events continue to unfold. And building on that point, it's essential to understand the multifaceted nature of China's growth strategy. For instance, China's Made in China 2025 plan showcases an aggressive push toward becoming a world leader in high-tech industries. This strategic plan aims not just for advancement in technology, but also for self-reliance, which could further alter global supply chains and trade dynamics. That's a crucial insight, Dr. Zhang. The push, push for self-reliance, especially in critical technologies, indeed represents a strategic pivot. It's interesting to consider how this might impact global trade relations, particularly with countries heavily reliant on Chinese manufacturing. Lily, do you think this strategy of self-reliance and technological advancement will lead to more friction or cooperation on the global stage? That's a complex question, Professor Lin. On one hand, China's ambition for technological self-sufficiency and its position as a leading global supplier could foster more competition potentially leading to friction with other major powers. On the other hand, 
the world's increasing interconnectedness and the global nature of challenges such as, such as climate change could necessitate greater cooperation. China's advancements in green technologies, for example, are areas where cooperation could be mutually beneficial. Absolutely, Lily. And speaking of green technologies, China's role in the global energy transition cannot be overstated. As the largest producer and consumer of solar panels, China is pivotal in the push for renewable energy worldwide. This dual role as a leader in both the production and consumption of green technologies positions China uniquely in global environmental governance. True, Dr. Zhang. China's impact on the environment and its leadership in green technology are definitely areas where its global influence is felt. The country's commitment to achieving carbon neutrality by 2060 is another aspect that will shape its economic policies and international relations. Such ambitions position China as a key player in global efforts to combat climate change, presenting opportunities for leadership and collaboration. And with the global urgency to address climate change, China's actions and policies in this arena will be closely watched by the international community. The balance between economic growth, technological innovation, and environmental stewardship is a delicate one. But it's clear that China's policies in these areas will have far-reaching implications, not just for China, but for the global community as well. Indeed, Lily. The balancing act between economic growth and environmental sustainability is a challenge facing many countries, but it's particularly pronounced in China due to its size and economic trajectory. The country's efforts in reducing carbon emissions while maintaining its growth momentum are closely monitored globally. This sets a precedent, or rather a benchmark, for how other emerging economies might navigate their growth in a climate-conscious world. That's an astute observation, Dr. Zhang. The precedents China sets could essentially become a blueprint for sustainable development in the 21st century. This leads to another interesting point. China's leadership in green technology and its global environmental policies could also serve as a platform for soft power. By leading through example, China might enhance its global standing and influence, especially among developing nations seeking to balance development with environmental concerns. Professor Lin, your point about soft power is particularly insightful. The use of green technology as a means to expand influence highlights a shift in the dynamics of global power. It moves beyond traditional military and economic strength to encompass environmental leadership and technological innovation. This redefines what it means to be a superpower in the modern age. Precisely, Lily. And as we delve deeper into the criteria for modern superpower status, it's essential to consider the role of diplomacy and international coalitions. China's involvement in multilateral institutions and its efforts to lead new international frameworks, like the Belt and Road Initiative, are indicative of its strategic approach to reshape global governance and norms. Indeed, Dr. Zhang, China's Belt and Road Initiative is a prime example of how economic diplomacy can be used to forge new alliances and consolidate power. The initiative's blend of infrastructure development with economic partnerships illustrates a new model of international engagement, one that could potentially redraw geopolitical boundaries and influence. And as we consider the impact of these strategies, we must also ask how they interact with the existing international order. How does China's rise challenge or complement the established power structures and norms? The evolution of its role within institutions like the United Nations and the World Trade Organization will be crucial to watch as part of this conversation. Lily, that's a critical point. China's increasing involvement in and sometimes challenge to established international institutions mirror its broader ambitions on the global stage. This dual approach of working within and outside existing frameworks can be seen as part of its strategy to negotiate its ascent as a superpower while advocating for reforms that it perceives as beneficial to its interests and those of the developing world. And let's not overlook the military aspect. China's military modernization and assertiveness in territorial disputes, especially in the South China Sea, 
have been a point of concern for neighboring countries and global powers alike. This expansion plays a crucial role in China's superpower strategy, serving both as a shield for its economic interests and a tool for asserting its claims and projecting power. True, Professor Lin. The military developments, when viewed alongside the economic and diplomatic strategies we've discussed, paint a comprehensive picture of China's multifaceted approach to becoming a superpower. Its actions in the South China Sea also highlight the intricate balance between hard power and diplomatic engagement in China's foreign policy. Absolutely. And it raises the question of how other countries, particularly the United States and its allies, will respond to China's growing military capabilities and territorial ambitions. The dynamics of power and security in the Asia-Pacific region are definitely shifting, and the global implications are something that the world will have to contend with. That shift, Dr. Zhang, isn't just regional. It's fundamentally altering the global power structure. The United States, traditionally seen as the world's sole superpower post-Cold War, now has to reckon with a rising China that is not only challenging its economic dominance, but also its strategic interests globally. It's a complex and evolving situation, with both opportunities and challenges for international cooperation and competition. How China and the United States manage their rivalry and find areas for collaboration could very well shape the international order for decades to come. The role of diplomacy, economic policy, and military strategy in this bilateral relationship will be key areas to watch. That's a thought-provoking point, Lily. Reflecting on the economic policies, China's massive investment in cutting-edge technologies like artificial intelligence, 5G telecommunications, and renewable energy sources is not just about economic development. It's also a strategic move to establish a new type of leadership in the global arena. Indeed, Dr. Zhang. And these technological advancements are not happening in a vacuum. They're part of China's broader strategy to lead in setting global standards and norms for the next generation of technological infrastructure. It's a way of weaving soft power into the fabric of its superpower status. Right, Professor Lin. And speaking of soft power, China's cultural diplomacy, through initiatives like Confucius Institutes around the world, plays into this broader strategy as well. It's fascinating to see how technology and culture intertwine in China's approach to global influence. Precisely, Lily. And let's not forget how China's advancements in technology and its economic growth trajectory are influencing other developing countries. They are increasingly looking to China as a model for development, which in turn bolsters China's position as a leader among these nations. That influence among developing nations is crucial, Dr. Zhang. It's not just about economic partnerships, but also about creating a coalition of countries that support China's stance in global forums. This coalition building is a key element of China's strategy to reshape international norms and policies in its favor. And as we delve deeper into this coalition building strategy, it raises questions about the future of global governance. How will these shifting alliances and the emergence of new blocs affect the balance of power and the pursuit of multilateral agreements? It's a dynamic that's still unfolding, and the implications could be profound. Absolutely, Lily. The dynamics of global governance are indeed shifting. It's important to note that this isn't the first time the world has seen a power shift, but the scale and speed at which China is moving are unparalleled. This raises the question. How prepared is the world for a new power paradigm, especially in areas like global trade and security? That's a critical question, Dr. Zhang. The world's response has been mixed. On one hand, there's an acknowledgement of the need for a multipolar world for better balance. On the other hand, there's apprehension about the implications of such a shift on international law and order. It's like walking a tightrope. Too much tilt on either side could disrupt the current global equilibrium. It's fascinating and somewhat paradoxical, isn't it? The very concept of multipolarity suggests more equality among nations, yet the journey towards achieving it seems fraught with competition and conflict. Professor Lin, do you think there's a way for the international community to navigate this transition more smoothly? 
And adding to Lily's point, how do we ensure that this transition benefits the global population at large and not just the leading powers? After all, economic globalization and technological advancements have created a world that's more interconnected than ever before. Can this interconnectedness be a tool for more harmonious relations, or will it exacerbate current tensions? Those are both pertinent points. To address Lily's question, history shows that diplomacy and dialogue are key in managing power transitions. For instance, international institutions and agreements have played crucial roles in past transitions, providing forums for negotiation and cooperation. As for Dr. Zhang's point, the interconnectedness of today's world indeed offers unique opportunities for collaboration, especially in combating global challenges like climate change and pandemics. Leveraging this interconnectedness constructively could lead to a more inclusive global order. It sounds like there's a delicate dance between competition and cooperation on the global stage. The Belt and Road Initiative we started discussing can be seen as a microcosm of this larger dynamic. By building infrastructure and increasing connectivity, China positions itself as a leader, but also as a partner in development. This duality is fascinating and perhaps a key to understanding China's approach to its rise as a superpower. Exactly, Lily. And it's worth noting that China's approach, while unique, also draws on historical precedents. The Silk Road, for instance, was not just about trade, but about exchanging ideas, cultures, and technologies. This historical lens might provide valuable insights into how modern initiatives like the Belt and Road could shape not just economic, but also cultural and technological landscapes globally. Drawing on history is insightful, Dr. Zhang. It reminds us that while the tools and contexts change, the underlying human endeavors of connection, exploration, and cooperation remain constant. Whether it's the Silk Road of the past or the digital Silk Roads of the future, the fundamental goals of fostering understanding and prosperity are timeless. That perspective frames China's actions in a more holistic light, suggesting that its current strategies are not merely about economic dominance, but also about reviving and reshaping ancient pathways of mutual benefit. Professor Lin, in the context of international relations, how do you see other powers responding to this blend of economic and cultural diplomacy from China? And, to add to Lily's question, Considering the strategic nature of the Belt and Road Initiative, it's interesting to ponder the economic repercussions for countries involved. How do they balance the immediate benefits of infrastructure development with the long-term implications of closer ties with China? Lily, your question points to a complex dance of diplomacy and strategy. Countries are increasingly aware of the soft power aspect of China's approach, and responses vary widely. Some see it as an opportunity to elevate their own global standing and economic development, while others view it with skepticism, concerned about dependency or loss of sovereignty. The key for many of these countries lies in negotiation strategies that maximize benefits while preserving independence. Precisely, Professor Lin. This balancing act is crucial. For many countries, the allure of immediate infrastructure improvements is weighed against potential future geopolitical leverage. Yet, this is not a new scenario in international relations. Historical parallels show that powers have always sought influence through economic means. The difference today might lie in the scale and the global visibility of these initiatives. This brings an interesting angle to the discussion. The idea of economic influence as a tool for geopolitical leverage is as old as history itself. Yet the global platform and the interconnectedness of today's world amplify every move. Dr. Zhang, in terms of economic outcomes, could this strategy lead to a more balanced global economy, or might it exacerbate existing inequalities? Lily's point about the global platform amplifying every move is crucial. It highlights the importance of transparency and dialogue in these large-scale initiatives. Without it, mistrust can fester leading to geopolitical tensions. However, with effective communication and mutually beneficial agreements, these strategies can indeed contribute to a more balanced global economy, reducing inequalities by uplifting less developed regions. That's optimistic, Professor Lin, and indeed a potential outcome. 
The critical factor here would be the execution of these initiatives. They must be designed in such a way that they genuinely foster sustainable development rather than creating dependency or exacerbating debt crises. This is where international oversight and collaborative frameworks can play a role, ensuring that economic development proceeds in an equitable and sustainable manner. Speaking of sustainable development, one of China's most pressing challenges is its environmental issues. Dr. Zhang, considering China's significant role in global manufacturing and its impact on the environment, how do you see China addressing this challenge while continuing its economic growth? That's a pertinent question, Lily. China is at a critical juncture where it must reconcile its industrial growth with environmental sustainability. Recent years have seen a shift towards greener policies, like investing in renewable energy and imposing stricter emissions controls on industries. This not only helps in addressing the domestic environmental crisis, but also sets a global example. The transition to a green economy could be a cornerstone in maintaining its growth and superpower status. Indeed, Dr. Zhang. This transition is also a strategic move in the geopolitical arena. By leading in renewable energy technologies, China can leverage this expertise as part of its economic diplomacy, potentially easing tensions and fostering cooperation with other countries concerned about climate change. This is a vivid example of how addressing domestic challenges can have positive ramifications on the international stage. And this approach could partly mitigate concerns related to China's aging population. By focusing on high-tech and green industries which require skilled labor, there's an opportunity to offset the economic impacts of an aging workforce. However, success in these areas would depend heavily on China's ability to innovate and lead in these sectors. Professor Lin, could you share your thoughts on how China's internal policies, particularly in education and innovation, support this trajectory? Absolutely, Lily. China has made significant investments in education, particularly in STEM fields, to build a skilled workforce capable of driving innovation. Additionally, policies encouraging domestic innovation and the development of high-tech industries are central to this strategy. This focus not only prepares China to address its demographic and environmental challenges, but also positions it as a leader in the next generation of global economic development. It's clear that while China faces significant challenges, its strategic approach towards economic diplomacy, environmental sustainability, and innovation could mitigate these obstacles. The key will be how these strategies are implemented and how China navigates its relations with other countries amidst these endeavors. Thank you, Dr. Zhang and Professor Lin, for such an insightful conversation. It seems that China's rise as a superpower is accompanied by a complex set of challenges. However, through strategic planning and international cooperation, there are pathways to address them effectively. It's a scenario that underscores the importance of understanding both the economic and geopolitical landscapes. Thank you to our listeners for joining us today, and we look forward to exploring more global dynamics in future discussions.